first of all, before I begin, I want to thank all of the librarians and scholars in Europe who I imposed upon last year for NCC's research access guides. I see many of you in the audience, and I thank you all for the information that you shared with me, which I fully intended to spend more time talking about today, but I won't, unfortunately. Uh, there's a funny story behind this. Um, in fact, I did make this presentation at Doshisha University in March for people from Kyodai and Doshisha and Nitsumeikon. And in the course of working on this project, um, I started making lists of various kinds of collections that are profiled in NCC's 200 research access guides, including many from European institutions. And I got started working on the collections, first of all, that were related to the Japanese-American experience. This was partly spirited by Fabiano Roca's presentation last year at EAJRS about Japanese Canadians. Um, and I felt the need to correct some of the uh, misimpressions about how easily the Americans had to deal with uh, the Second World War. So I was planning to make approximately a quarter of this presentation about the wonderful collections, digital collections, of Japanese American materials that are contained particularly in the libraries that are listed here on, on this list. Uh, the University of Hawaii has some amazing ones. Most importantly, I think the Japanese American National Museum, which is in Los Angeles, has an amazing collection of dozens and dozens of digital collections of art, of photographs, of documents, and of mementos. And then, all of a sudden, reality intervened in April. I was starting to work on the project. Okay, where, where are we now? Why aren't we going anywhere? Doesn't like my... Sorry about this. Yeah. No. Okay. Oop, that's not... Yeah. No, that's... Yes. All right. Uh, this is to give you a little preview of some of the things that are contained in the Japanese American collections. Many, many photographs like these. This is a map of the location of all of the major internment camps that were in the U.S. I trust you'll appreciate the essentialized drawing on the side there. I, I, I find it fascinating that they would come up with a drawing like that. Such a, such a beautiful young Japanese woman in traditional dress, when in fact the reality of what they were doing was more like this, standing in line in front of horse stalls where they were in assembly areas and would be staying for weeks and weeks upon time in the very stalls that the horses had been in, quite fragrant as well. And these are what the camps were like that they ended up going to. So I was planning on showing you a lot of more of these and others when all of a sudden a major protest arose in April. There uh, was, this was online activism at its best. Um, as many of you know, one of NCC's roles is to be an advocate for the needs of users. And in April, there was a change.org petition that came online uh, that we, NCC, was act, asked to take part in and to recruit more people to sign. I think many of you signed that very petition. And the point of this petition was that the collections of mementos, art, uh, documents, various materials that came from the internment camps and had been collected by a scholar who had written a book in 1952 about the art 
that came out of the internment camp. He was a scholar of uh, uh, the American arts and crafts movement. And he had assembled a collection of over 450 materials. This is only an example of one um, that was part of a lot of uh, watercolor drawings. And the thing that makes this photograph particularly interesting is that during the internment period, photographs of the walls, the barbed wire, and the, the guard towers around the camps were prohibited. Ansel Adams and Dorothea Lange and other major American photographers were invited to the camps to take documentary pictures. And those collections are, are housed at the Japanese American National Museum and other uh, collections in the US. But the one thing they were never allowed to take a photograph of was either the barbed wire or the guard houses. So these drawings that were made by internees in the camps are some of the best documentation that we have of the what the real life behind the bars was. And this collection, which had belonged to, been given largely by internees to the artist who had taken their interviews and compiled images of their art, putting it into his book, they had given him this material with the understanding that eventually it would become part of an exhibition or a museum. He, like many of us, died. And his descendants sold the stuff. And it all came up for auction at an, art, an auction house in New Jersey and was going to be sold off one piece by one piece. And the project, Japanese Art History Not for Sale, um, contacted many groups around the country, including the NCC. And this, this is from our homepage on the day when finally the national news started carrying this story. This is a full month after uh, the auction was proposed um, on April 15th. The very next day, George Takei called the owner of the Ragu auction house from Australia where he was on vacation. As most of you know, Mr. Takei is a very famous American actor and activist a former star of uh, Star Trek. And he was able to talk the auction house out of selling the materials right away. And he was able to ask them to put them aside and that he personally would try to put together a group of people to purchase the collection. Which, in fact, happened. And now I'm happy to say the materials are all at the Japanese American National Museum in Los Angeles. Which brings me back to the original part of the story. So, among the most wonderful collections at the Japanese American National Museum, also, this is just an example of some of the things that they have there. Many, many photographs. Also, some amazing drawings of life within the camps. Since cameras were suppressed, if not entirely prohibited. They weren't prohibited, but they were there. Um, also, there are some remarkable collections in many of the California state um, libraries. Uh, UCLA has some. Uh, this is from the USC collection. And also, to cut back to Fabiano, the University of British Columbia has a really lovely collection of a Japanese Canadian photographs, which um, should be, which are of great research benefit. Just to give you a sampling of some of the other things I was hoping to speak about with regard to NCC's collection, there are 
many, many fabulous digital maps, and I have a little dot here because I know somebody at this conference is going to be talking about more digital maps that we don't have in our collection yet. So that's reserved for that presentation or those presentations. Our goal is to try to link as many of the digital collections as we can so that an, a user will be able to use our research guides to be able to navigate easily on a given topic from one institution's digital collection to another without, simple, without having to surf through the entire website of another institution. So this is an example of one of the major sets of um, materials that we have available. Um, digital maps, as you all know, the Library of Congress is the mother load in the States. Um, I want to hear more about some digital maps in Europe. I was, tr I was looking at some of the sites that I have and I couldn't find very many. So if I am missing some digital Asian maps, uh, please inform me later uh, from those institutions, at least that have been already profiled. Um, UC Berkeley, I think you've all heard about their map collection in the past, and I hope you've all used it. Uh, it's unbelievable collection, and I know Toshie will be talking about other aspects of the larger Mitsui collection uh, later. Unfortunately, not digitized yet, but. We hope that will happen. Um, I also want to point out the various areas where amazing visual image collections are easily accessible through our uh, website. Um, many of you are very aware of our image use protocol website, which helps you to, under to use and understand the best practices for accessing and getting permission to legally use visual images from Japan. And uh, for anybody who is interested, please do use that website. It is the go-to place, and people in art history are always telling me how their book would have taken five years longer if they hadn't used our guides. Thank you, Fabiano, for all your work on that. Um, also, I hope some of you have had a chance to visit the, uh, the Boston Museum of Fine Arts pages. Boston Museum of Fine Arts has unquestionably the largest collection of Japanese prints anywhere outside of Japan. And approximately 60,000 of them have been digitized. They received a huge grant about six years ago from NHK and they have been digitizing constantly ever since then. And everything on their site is searchable. You can see thumbnails of all of the images with the metadata. It is an absolutely unparalleled research tool. And of course it is linked from our collection. Another one that I really Adore is the East Asian Image Collection at Lafayette College in the U.S. It has now about, I think it has about 7,000 images, mostly of the Japanese colonial period. Lots of them came from postcards. Um, they're all searchable. You can down, they're, they're big enough to be able to use in teaching. The, the Museum of Fine Arts ones are a little small usually and not very good. Um, resolution, but uh, the ones from Lafayette are really quite usable. And then one other collection that we just sort of came across that I find absolutely fascinating from a museum and art conceptualization perspective is the Brooklyn Museum of Arts database of 800 past exhibitions, which includes a number of Japanese exhibitions, of course not exclusively, but it includes more than 8,000 images from Japan. And it's a really fascinating tool for anyone, any student or, who is thinking about how one plans and puts together an art exhibition. 
and it includes a lot of background data on on how the collections were conceptualized and then images and the some the text and so forth so these are these are all very very useful and usable uh, materials. Another focus that, of course, we're commemorating these days um, is the Second World War. Um, and then I added a few other major disasters. Uh, but to speak of the Second World War, I wanted to particularly mention uh, University of Hawaii at Manoa's absolutely stellar database of digitized collections, uh, which does include quite a bit about the Second World War, a lot of the local um, history of uh, Hawaiians who were in the war and various other aspects, as well as the University of Chicago's collection, The Atomic Age, which focuses on their focuses or begins with the collection of Enrico Fermi, who was a faculty member at Chicago, who was one of the creators of the atomic bomb. And it begins with that uh, whole development of the bomb and then moves forward and has been greatly updated recently after the meltdown in Fukushima. And so it, it moves forward from the beginning, from the creation of the atomic bomb through the nuclear age, and or the atomic age. So uh, it's a very, very useful site. Um, and then in addition, I just threw in a few others that we have uh, connected from our site, which um, are of great use. Um, the Brown University Kanto earthquake uh, photographs. Uh, a huge collection of visual images, postcards from and photographs from the Kanto earthquake were donated to Brown. And they are fabulous materials to be used in uh, teaching or research. Rather gruesome, I must say, many of them. Um, and then there are three things that I wanted to particularly highlight that have wonderful digital collections um, related to the um, 2011, uh, three. Th 311 disasters in um, Japan. Uh, there'll be more tomorrow on the Japan Digital Archive at Harvard. Tohoku University has wonderful materials, as does Sendai MediaTek, uh, which both have uh, links from our site. And just to go back, this is, this is the page of our site. And you can see you can click immediately on uh, those areas, North America, Japanese, European institutions. And also what I wanted to mention before my time runs out is the further resources, because there's a lot of valuable material here. The further resources page concentrates on grants and access services. It particularly looks at how you can go to an a, a certain place and get a grant to do so. For example, the Library of Congress has a number of grants, including the Kluge Fellowships, which can enable a, a scholar or a librarian to go there and do research using their collections and the other collections in their area. Uh, Rockefeller Archives Center, which has a lot of material on Japan, particularly in the post-war period, has quite generous research grants that are quite easy to apply for. Um, in addition, the Prang Collection, as you probably know, also has travel grants. Almost all of the major collections here have travel grants to go to work in their library, and our guide has a link on this page to all of those that I currently know about. So if you're thinking about wanting to do research or you have a scholar or a student coming to you who wants to do research on one of the topics contained in our site or that you happen to know about, please check out this page because there's quite a bit of material available. <laughs> and we do have a 1,000 websites. But before I go, I want to tell you about something that's coming up in November. We're doing a two-day workshop 
very closely related to what several of you have talked about and I know that others will talk about soon. We are doing a workshop called Advancing Digital Scholarship in Japanese Studies that will bring together those that have created projects as well as the technicians who have helped them create those projects and discuss how to create, expand, and sustain such projects with the goal of advising NCC on creating some very basic best practices and guidelines to help people, scholars and students, who have not done it yet, who have, are digital scholarship virgins and really want to get in there. So that is our goal, and I hope that some of you will plan to come. We do have small travel grants, um, and if you are thinking about coming, I may be able to pay your airfare and part of your uh, expenses. So, thank you so much, Vicky. Thank you. Thank you so much for <laughs> introducing wonderful website. Right, I think we have one or two questions or comments. Before you ask, please identify yourself, your name and institution, please. Right, the floor is open. Any, anybody? Toshi-san, please. Well, this is just a comment, but the, uh, oh, oh wait, uh, I am Toshi Mara from uh, UC Berkeley Library. Um, well, Biki mentioned about uh, several um, digital library projects uh, about Japanese American history. Um, uh, in the list, I, I just noticed that the UCLA was not included, and so I just. <laughs> well, but the, uh, I, well, I, I'm not uh, working at UCLA any longer. But the UCLA's job collection is, I think, quite uh, quite uh, outstanding, and so I just wanted to add. Thank you. Right, okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Becky.